What do you want to know? Poor Max, the GRU asset. I collaborated with DNR, with the terrorists. They you don't added. know who sponsors them? We don't know, but we can speculate like others can speculate about us. Okay. They're tied, Grozev and... They go uh, back a long time as friends oh. and also as uh, people who are involved in non-open source information. But it's unforgivable, he still try to sell a military jet story that even the Russians dropped already. It has to stop. She's gonna spank him and teach him a lesson. You little coward. As I understand, it's only the beginning, right? Oh, the Russians, they're infiltrating our country. And what I do, it should be prohibited. Well, Eric and I are willing to join you, you know. But you're not a Gru asset. Maybe you are the little girl who says the emperor has no clothes. So to Let's speak. drink to higher powers. I drink to the higher powers. Hello, Max. Jana, hi. It's very unexpected to see you. Well, miracles happen, huh? <laughs> I know. What's up? We haven't seen each other for like, what, half a year? Yeah, the last time was March, probably. March. After right. The Hague. Right. Yeah. The events in The Hague were organized with the peaceful people. Crazy year, huh? Yeah, yeah. I thought uh, I was through with MA70 a bit. I would follow it. I, I decided to go back into the commercial business to pay off my debts mm -hmm. and to get a future for my family uh, and follow MH17 as an amateur again, not full time, no more traveling, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, it was decided differently by higher powers. So to Let's speak. drink to higher powers. I drink to the higher powers. I'm glad they brought us together. Okay. What do you want to know? I want to know what brought you to Moscow, Sheremetyevo Terminal D. Okay. Um, in short, the people who are following us, they know already what happened. People who know nothing. I'll just say, you and I, we made a documentary that had more than 300,000 viewers worldwide. Very successful Bonanza Media Project. You were the director. I was responsible for the content. Uh, I think we did a very good job. and. Uh, well, 300,000 viewers thought so too. Uh, I didn't think of that a lot. And then afterwards, we, we decided this year to do another campaign. Uh, but surprisingly, when we finished it in March, I, I thought we were, we're through with the subject. You and I, you're mm -hmm. going to do other projects in journalism. I'm going to completely leave journalism. But then uh, a few weeks ago, a smear campaign started against us. Uh, all the Dutch media jumped on the bandwagon. There was a foreign organization that had information from hackers, illegally obtained information, and uh, you and I, we, we were painted like very badly by the Black Mirror hacker group or whatever that Are was. Are we sure it was, you know, hackers though? It's a hacker information. If you want to smear a person and you have a source that wants to stay out of it, then you create a mirror image. You, you put mirrors there, yeah. so nobody looks what's the real one and what's the mirror. So the, I think the name Black Mirror was very well chosen by the Bellingcats. Uh, I will not mention that name one more time. <laughs> but it's a for, for me as a Dutch person, this is a foreign entity. Mm -hmm. And they just uh, brainwashed my entire country, Netherlands, including all the media. And uh, what they came up with is was like, very small, I gave my passport to somebody allegedly from the GRU and they came about five years ago that I gave, I collaborated with DNR, with the terrorists. In Dutch, the collaboration, it sounds like you, you were working with the Nazis. To collaborate in Dutch, it's not a neutral term. Yeah, so I got tired of it and I thought there's no substance in it. I thought they were specifically attacking you, not, not so much me because you were supposedly to have contact with the GRU. Um, I felt very sorry for you, and I thought, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight this very obvious defamation that's going on.
And then why Moscow? Because uh, Bellingcat's partner in Russia, the insider, mm -hmm. probably sponsored by an oligarch, a rogue oligarch who left Russia for a long time. Uh, you don't added, know who sponsors them? No? We, we don't know, but we can speculate like others can speculate about us. Okay. So then the head journalists there, I paint journalists because he calls me a journalist, this Mr. Roman. But I'm sorry, Max, they're official partners of Bellingcat, the yeah. insider or... Yeah, okay. the, so Bellingcat is very proud to share with them uh, information. And then the insider is doing the Russian uh, articles, Russian language articles and Bellingcat the English articles. The article about right. you and me and Bonanza, it's almost identical, the Russian version from the insider and the English version from okay. Bellingcat. But do you think uh, it's just Bellingcat sharing information with insider or uh, insider or that Roman Dobrokhodov, uh, you know, helps them investigate, you know? Uh, I can only speculate. I read articles about them that uh, English, Austrian, Bulgarian, Christo Grozev from Bellingcat one of the Russia experts mm -hmm. is working closely together with Do Roman, I cannot pronounce, Do Dobro Kotkovic. Dobrokhodov. Oh, Dobro really? Dobrokhodov. So they're, they're tied, Grozev and They go Dobro back a long time as friends and oh. also as uh, people who are involved in uh, non-open source information. Let me put it very carefully. Um, so this Roman, he had the audacity to make a tweet First of all, hi Max, tomorrow you will hear something special, so a very intimidating tweet. I didn't know the guy at all, so I googled him and then I found out the connections. And then um, he made a tweet, well, that Max is uh, paid by the GRU, so the Russian military intelligence, is one thing, but it's unforgivable, he still tried to sell the uh, uh, military jet story that even the Russians dropped already. And then I thought, okay, you're my boy. I'm going to look for a very strong lawyer in Russia, the best defamation lawyer there is. I found her, Stalina Gurievich, and uh, well, he's, she's going to spank him and teach him a lesson. As I understand, it's only the beginning, right? I decided, like Tsar Alexander, you let Napoleon come all the way to Moscow and then you roll them back. So let them come, let, let them overestimate themselves and underestimate their opponent. And then I started in Moscow with Roman and I worked my back all the way to all the Dutch media and also to Deze 66 Schuert Schuertsma, you little coward. So uh, I think there's, there are a lot of uh, court cases coming and um, it would be more convenient to have like a joint, you know, legal team or something, I don't know. What are you saying? Um, yeah, so I'm still in the consulting process with you and with Eric. The legal thing is we have to list everything that everybody said, all the slanderous defamation things. We have to spit it out. What is the slander? What is the defamation? Who said it? On behalf of whom? This is going to be individuals. There's going to be media companies. There's going to be politicians. There's going to be politicians, yes. And then this has to stop. This, this, this vicious attack against us, tiny media bloggers, pretending that they pretend that we are some group project that the Russian government tries to brainwash the people all over the... We know the truth, it was our grassroots project we set up together. Uh, totally. I heard that they mentioned even my name in, in Dutch parliament. Yeah. Is, the, is that true? Well, there's a Magnitsky law in the Netherlands now. It goes too far to explain that. But the Dutch, they thought it's a very good idea to make their own Magnitsky law. So uh, it's very important to uh, human rights violations that people can put, put on the blacklist. And so uh, two politicians got a prize. Mm -hmm. And one of them is Mr. Schutzma from D66. And exactly the morning that the prize would be handed out to him, he interrupted the start of the parliamentary session. He said, oh, the Russians, they're infiltrating our country. And there's a Dutch guy, he's directed by the Russians and we have to talk about it now. And that guy was me, that he was talking. He never asked my opinion. And then Jana, within 48 hours, these questions by Schultzma and another politician, they were answered by, by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, by Minister Stef Bloch himself, saying that they're going to monitor Bonanza Media and other Russian propaganda outlets more and more in the future. And there are some hysterical people already 
proposing that the law has to be changed, that we fall under the Spionage Act, because what I did technically is not treason, but it becomes close to it. And what I do, it should be prohibited and it should be, the law should be changed. And there's lawyers who even volunteer to help making these new laws. So uh, I despise these people in a very quiet way, I point this out. Jana, sorry, I cannot tell this without any emotion because I am emotional about it. I'm just, I'm, I'm an independent journalist. I did war crime investigations of the Dutch army in Indonesia. I was criticized as a traitor then. Now journalists get subsidies to copy my research I did 10 years ago. So I don't need to be put as a traitor in the MH17 case, but what happens now is unheard of. It's not acceptable. They paint right. us in the corner like traitors. You can disagree with us, you can say it's a lousy documentary, but you're not a Gru asset, I'm not, no. I'm, and I'm not a traitor, I'm going to fight these people who slander me. Uh, well, Eric and I are willing to join you, you know. Yes. <laughs> it's not well, only you. <laughs> I have a proposal for the two of you, maybe as news, as a scoop here in the, exactly in our interview. I intend to set up a foundation, and the foundation is going to be covering the Bonanza Media product that you do, uh, my projects, Eric, so we're going to join forces in this foundation, and this foundation will lead the legal battle against all the people who de mm -hmm. defamated us. We're going to do crowdfunding, because I already spent a few thousand euros on lawyers and uh, investigations. Um, in the first stage, I think we should aim for five or ten thousand euros just to have this money in stock, mm -hmm. so our opponents know they cannot smoke us out and they sit it out because we don't have money. I will, I will borrow money, whatever it takes, to finish this, all these courses. No, I think it's a good suits. idea and uh, I'm totally on board with you that uh, they should be uh, held liable and responsible for yeah. these things. It has to stop. I challenge anybody who wants to be challenged, address our content, the content of our work. Yeah, what exactly is the disinformation? They can, what they can show us in court what's the disinformation. Totally. Everybody talks Let about, them prove that's that with, in court. That's with the emperor's clothes. Eh? Everybody talks about the clothes of the emperor. So maybe you are the little girl who says the emperor has no clothes. Maybe that's your job this time. What happened when you came to Moscow? You came to visit your lawyer uh, to file a suit against uh, Roman Dobrohodov uh, from Insider for his um, insinuations and uh, false uh, claims. Uh, what happened? You came to Moscow. Well, the idea was I go to the lawyer, I sign the documents for power of attorney, mm -hmm. I consult her, I have a few questions about legal procedures in Russia, uh, but I never made it through the border. I got stuck at the border. That's what happened. So uh, I got stuck in Terminal D. Why? Um, I was aware there were special conditions due to COVID. Every country has special rules. I looked up the rules. For Russia, you must have a valid visa, which I have. It's a business visa. You must be invited by a Russian person. You must have COVID tests not older than 72 hours. I had all that. I specifically bought Aeroflot ticket, a Russian airline. Um, then. At the airport, I got a surprise. They said there is a UCAS 635. It means it's the FSB, the Russian uh, intelligence agency. Mm -hmm. You have a list with people who are allowed to enter the country. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Even if all the documents for the rest are okay, you're not allowed into the country unless you're on that list. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> nobody has that list except the FSB. So we cannot check if you're on that list. But how do you get on that list? Um, to be honest, I still haven't figured out. I yeah. think you, you have to apply at the FSB, or maybe uh, your employer, if you have a job in Russia, they oh. have to call the FSB and put... But what they told me at the airport, the air flight staff, they were very nice, by the way, and they warned me, there is a residual risk, you'll not enter the country, so I'd not blame Aeroflot, I'd not blame... I don't blame anybody. Mm -hmm. It was my own choice to go there, because from what they told me, it's very easy <clears throat> in your situation. They knew about my documentary. Mm -hmm. They recognized my face. So they said, for you, it's a formality to get on that list. You call your lawyer, you call uh, another friend or whatever. Okay. So, so I took the flight 
And I landed 10.30 in Moscow, Sheremetyevo airport. 10.30 p.m. Yeah. And then I got stuck because the girl said, oh, sir, you're not on the list. I said, what list? So you are from the customs, but it's FSB list. So I'm not on the list, why not? So you call the person to put me on the list and then I wait here. And then she says, no, 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 you sit there on the chair. And that was, was I, well, that's what I did. So everybody passed through customs. And I got stuck with about 15 people, one man from Canada, one Mrs. Bauer from Germany. Oh, so there uh, were other people too? Yeah, they all had all their documents prepared, mm -hmm. but they were not on the FSB list and they didn't know that they were not on the list. Oh, so the same situation as yours? Exactly the same. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So what happened to them? Okay, we passed Saturday night. <laughs> it became Sunday morning. And we were all just sitting there like, okay, what's going to happen next? And then after two hours, the name was called, And then she got her document <laughs> and she got her copy from the FSB list. She was put on the list by somebody, obviously, and then she could enter. And then a few hours later, a uh, Canadian guy and some, I think some guys from Tashkent, I'm not mm -hmm. I, I didn't listen to the, con I, I thought so. All of us, and then during the night until 6 a.m. about, yeah, 14 people <laughs> went through the border, except for poor Max, the Gru asset. He got stuck right. on the floor. <laughs> And right. So that was, I, I found that so cynical. I, I, in my country, I'm painted as a traitor and a grew asset, military intel, and I'm in Moscow, nobody knows me, and they just let me rot there on the cold floor. Okay, then, what, what did you do? Aeroflot person picked me up and said, I'm going to bring you now from the customs to the Terminal D. Okay. And there you can sit and uh, have your, do your thing until your flight uh, Wednesday, December 3, goes back right. to... Uh, so, uh, who did you contact to try and fix this I contacted problem? my lawyer. Okay. And I contacted my Russian friends who live in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. I signed them in if they could call the embassy or they called MFA. Mm -hmm. Then the lawyer is very well connected. She has direct access to MFA, to mm -hmm. the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to the uh, Russian Ministry of Defense. Mm -hmm. to, she, I mean, she is a powerful lawyer, but right. she couldn't do anything for me. So wow. That was a shocker. Wow. And then the. Um, so you had Dimitri the return ticket. from United Nations, Deputy United Nations. He tweeted me. He said, "Max, I see the inconvenient situation from your tweet. Today is Sunday. I cannot help you, but uh, maybe Monday. So hang in there." Mm, so Monday also nothing happened. And then my friends in Holland, I got a I got a message from the. Uh, staff from the Russian embassy in The Hague, they were, they were trying to help me out and I had to explain what is really exactly my problem, but also nothing materialized. I told them it's already too late because it was already Tuesday. Oh, right. So, and you when had a return ticket for Wednesday. I still had a return ticket, so I thought I'd just sit in Terminal D. I, I, I can sleep in a capsule module hotel, like small mm. bed. Uh, there's restaurants there, there's internet. Right. So basically I could even do my regular work with the e-bikes. And so then you contacted me and we decided why not meet in a neutral territory. Yeah, I think it was your idea to go to Istanbul yeah. and to uh, have a good discussion. Yeah. And I think that makes a circle round. That's why we are here. <coughs>